PayPal holding sticker PYPL is currently trading at $62.50 and over the past 6 months they are down by 15%. Now if we have a look at the 5 year chart we can see that over the past 5 years the company is down by more than 32%. Now most of you, including me, probably use PayPal for various internet transactions and therefore the question would be, if so many people still use PayPal, why is their stock price falling? And whether it is a good idea to buy PayPal at its current trading price. Now jumping to my interactive brokers account and navigating to fundamentals, we can see that Morningstar gives PayPal a fair value estimate of 135 USD dollars, which is again more than 100% of PayPal's current trading price. Now if we jump over to the analysts forecast and switch to annual, we can see that the earnings per share of PayPal is indeed expected to rise more than 100% by the year 2027. Net income before tax is expected to keep rising as well and if we scroll all the way down, we can see that revenue is expected to rise as well. Now to figure out whether PayPal is a good buy at its current trading price, we'll jump over to my fully automatic stock valuation spreadsheets, which by the way you can access at my Patreon in the link in the description, and we'll type in the ticker PYPL. And when we press enter, all the important metrics will show up automatically. Now if we direct our attention to the right here, we can see that PayPal currently doesn't pay out any dividends whatsoever. And in my opinion, that is a very good thing, as they are focusing more of their free cash flow and more of their income towards innovation. Now we can also see that the analyst's current target price is sitting at $88.67, which is quite higher than the current trading price of the company. Now the beta of the company is sitting at 1.33 which means that you will see quite a bit more volatility with PayPal than you would with the overall market. Now to figure out whether PayPal is a good addition to your portfolio, we'll jump over to my 9 pillar analysis where we can see the 9 most important metrics an investor should consider when buying a stock. The first metric is the 5 year PE ratio which should be sitting below 22.5 and for PayPal this is currently sitting at 44.24 which means that PayPal is spending a bit more money than I would like to see to generate revenue. The next metric is the 5 year profit margin to be sitting above 10%. This is indeed in the green for PayPal. Now the next two metrics are the net income growth and the revenue growth over the past 5 years and this basically tells you as an investor that the company is growing. We also want there to be a decrease in shares outstanding and as we can see PayPal has indeed been decreasing their shares outstanding over the past few years. Now the reason why you want to see a decrease in shares outstanding as an investor is very simple. As there are less shares in the market, their value goes up and therefore the value of your investment goes up as well. Now the next metric and probably my favorite metric is the long term liabilities of the 5 year free cash flow negative dividends to be sitting below 3. Now this means that the company would be capable of paying off their long term liabilities with their 5 year free cash flow in a set period of time. 0.57 means that PayPal would be capable of paying off their long term liabilities in about 3 to 4 years. Now the next metric is the increasing free cash flow over the past 5 years. This is very similar to the revenue growth and net income growth except it focuses on the free cash flow growth. The price to free cash flow should be sitting below 20 as we can see it is currently sitting at 14.59 and there should be consecutive dividend growth but as we know PayPal doesn't currently pay out any dividends. Now we can jump to our first intrinsic valuation model which is the Grams formula revised and here we will take the earnings per share, the base PE, the 5 year growth estimate, the growth rate multiplier and the average yield on AA corporation bonds which we will divide by the current yield on AA corporation bonds and this will give us an intrinsic value of $120.17, which is almost 100% higher than the current trading price of the company. Now moving on to the next valuation model, the discounted cash flow model, we have a look at the free cash flow over the past 5 years and calculate the average growth rate to be sitting at 22.51%. Being conservative, I calculate the future growth rate of 8% and using that calculated future growth rate, I calculate the future free cash flow up to the year 2031. After that that using the discount rate, I calculate the present value of that future free cash flow. I sum up all that future free cash flow, add any cash and cash equivalent, subtract total debt and get an equity value, which I divide by the shares outstanding and get an intrinsic value of $120.69. 
which is very similar to the intrinsic value we got in our Grams formula. Now we can move to the next valuation model, the multiples valuation model. And here we compare PayPal to companies which operate in the same sector, in this case GPN and FI. We take these companies' stock prices and divide by their earnings per share to get their price to earnings ratio. We then average out this price to earnings ratio and multiply by the earnings per share of PayPal to get an intrinsic value of $129.83. Again, fairly similar to our discounted cash flow analysis and our Grams formula revised. Now as PayPal doesn't currently pay out any dividends at all, we will skip the dividend discount model and arrive to our ultimate intrinsic valuation, where we average out the three valuation models we did prior and arrive at an ultimate intrinsic value of $123.56, which is currently almost 100% higher than the current trading price of the company. Now of course, if we plug in a margin of safety of say 50%, we would get an acceptable buy price at $61.78, which is very close to the current trading price of the company. Personally, I am already invested into PayPal and I keep buying more shares as their price keeps falling. Now that certainly doesn't mean that you as an investor should buy PayPal. I encourage you to always do your research rather than listen to guys on YouTube such as me. I would also very much encourage you to check out these valuation spreadsheets at my Patreon which can very much help you decide whether a company is a good investment. With that, if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like, consider subscribing and let me know which companies you would like me to evaluate next.